You know what would be the best timeline? The one where everything went down the way it was supposed to freaking go down. A few years ago, when we were talking about Connor Bedard and the 2023 NHL entry draft, we made a boatload of videos talking about Bedard and Mishkov. One, two. These guys would be the Ovechkin Crosby of this era, and this was going to be a phenomenal showcase of talent two, three years down the line when these guys would actually be eligible to be drafted. We had been talking about these guys since the beginning of the decade, but now the entire conversation has shifted quite tremendously. Oh, Mishkov this, Mishkov that, Mishkov attitude, Mishkov character issues, Mishkov Russian, Mishkov contract. We don't have the same conversations about him as we did before. Before, it was strictly just the talent. Now, it's the talent and a million other things bagged down on top of that. But, what if I told you that this timeline may actually have a chance of doing the right thing? Not necessarily the right thing and like, oh, you know, Batman, philosophical, good versus evil, whatever. No, what if... In 20 years' time, we actually look at the draft, and we look at the best players taken where they were, and we say, yeah, the draft went as the draft should have gone. Let's talk about an update we had had from Jeff Merrick on the 32 Thoughts podcast, and in fact, this isn't the only time Merrick brought it up. He talked about this somewhere else. I'm pretty sure it was on his own show, if not somewhere on the radio, but this is not the only time he went out there and said this. American 32 Thoughts says that someone texted him and said they think the Ducks will take Mishkov at two. This is not a report, they're just talking. Freestyling. Friedman adds that Pat Verbeek is the kind of person who would do that. His give-a-blank meter on what others think is very low. Friedman continues to say that Verbeek is also in a long rebuild, and that they're not in a rush to win. If there was anyone selecting that high in the draft that would have the leash to make a selection like that, it would be Verbeek and the Ducks. And so, nature is healing, folks. I'm not going to go out there and say that this is the definitive, what is going to happen truth about it all, but the fact that there is a chance that we actually see Mishkov go number two is awesome. Really awesome. Because, as we'd said, in 10 years' time, when these guys are in the NHL and doing their thing, there's a very real chance that is more than zero. I'm going to say it's maybe 40-45% that Mishkov is the best non-Bedard player in this year's draft. And it's going to take a while for him to come over. It's going to take a while for him to develop. But... At the end of the day, when all these players are retired, they're done. They're at a thousand plus points already. These guys may be in the Hall of Fame. At the end of the times, when we look at these drafts, we don't say, oh, look at Mishkov, Russian fact or whatever. They shouldn't have taken him where they took him. He should have dropped further. You always say, how did that guy drop to fifth overall? How did that guy drop to seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh? We're already saying the same thing about Caulfield and 15. It takes just a few years for a player to really change the status of how he is viewed in the eyes of the people making the draft picks. Because I think today, if you'd ask Vancouver, hey, would you rather have Bud Colson or Caulfield? They'd probably say Caulfield. If you ask, I don't know, New York, would you rather have Lafreniere or Tim Stutzla? They probably would say Stutzla. Sure, it takes a few years for this to happen, but it only takes a few years for this to happen. All it takes is Matvey Mishkov to come over to the NHL in 2026 or whenever it is, have a 30-goal, 60-point season, and then start putting up 50 bombs in order for us to say, darn it, he should have gone a lot higher. Screw the Russian factor. This is a guy that worked out. And of course, I'm talking about this all from the perspective of an idealistic world. It's not guaranteed that Mishkov goes out there and does the things that I'm saying he's going to do, but I'd say it's more likely that he attains this superstar status than him never ever coming to the NHL and having all the people who were scared about the Russian factor and the contract be proven correct. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right in my opinion to think about it like that. And so... If everything goes right and the Anaheim Ducks are like, screw it, this is our guy, this is the guy who has the most potential out of everybody in the remaining parts of the draft after Bedard, and they take Mishkov at second anyway, that would be the ultimate baller BDE type of move, and 
look, we had seen this argument pop up a few times as well in other conversations regarding other prospects over the years, but some of these guys, like NCAA talents, for example, if you draft a guy out of the NTDP, it's not uncommon to see a guy take two or three years in the NCAA anyway before coming over and playing for your NHL team. And even then, sometimes they don't start in the NHL right away, sometimes they start in the AHL. For some players, it takes them two college years, then an AHL year, and then they make their debut at the top pro men's league in the world in the NHL. For Matt Vimishkov, He's going to be playing in the second best league in the world for the majority of these two to three years. So by the time he makes the NHL in 2026, he's already got a lot of experience. He's probably already dominated against men. He already dominated against men this year. So the progression doesn't really make too much sense if you wanted to say, oh, yeah, we have to wait for him to come over. That's why we won't take him. We'll take a guy in the NCAA instead. But that guy might take the same amount of time to make the NHL in the first place. So it doesn't really matter, right? The Anaheim Ducks also, being in the position they are, they have so many amazing young pieces that they can afford to wait. Trevor Zegers was a rookie just last year. Mason McTavish, rookie this year. You have other guys, the three CHL defenders that dominated their respective leagues and were the D-men of the year in their leagues. Olin Zellweger, Pavel Mintukov, Tristan Luno, fantastic defender prospects. You got a really good goaltending prospect in Lucas Dostal. And now you have the opportunity to pair up Zegras and Mishkov together. Just imagine the back-to-back dual-wielding Michigan goals that could be going on in Anaheim if this goes down that way. No disrespect to the Adam Fantillis of the world, the Leo Carlsons of the world. Y'all are great, and y'all are probably going to become good players too. It's just Matvey Mishkov has been so above and beyond amazing for years now that ultimately, in my heart of hearts, I strongly believe that he still is the second best player in this draft in terms of potential, in terms of talent. Today, you could debate with Fantilli, okay, I'm going to say, yeah, goal scoring is a really important trait. And realistically, if you talk about BPA, Mishkov to me is second best. And if the Anaheim Ducks feel the same way and they end up taking him at second overall, then hey, hats off to you, Pat Verbeek. I'm going to go out there and layeth the smack down on all the other draft rankings that said that he would be going five, six, seven, maybe not even in the top 10. Maybe Vancouver had a chance to draft him. Yeah, while I would love that for sure, it makes a lot more sense for him to go second. But hey, if he goes to 11th, that's cool too. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about the Mishkov situation with the Anaheim Ducks? How this is a guy that could go as high as number two, or he could go as low as number 11. What are your opinions on where he should go? Where do you think he is going to go? In your ideal world, where does he place in this draft? Because when it comes to Mishkov versus Adam Fantilli, you could very much say that you'd rather have Fantilli as a prospect. I understand that centers are more coveted in the NHL, but I think the magnitude of how good Mishkov is and projects to be as a goal scorer is greater than the magnitude of Adam Fantilli and his ceiling as a center. Sure, he could be a top-line elite guy. He could get 80-90 points per season. But I'd rather have a guy that gets me 60-plus goals every year because Mishkov is the closest player in this draft to be able to do that who is not named Connor. Luminaire thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.